الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وأسوتنا وقائدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وبعد <coughs> Respected guests, brothers, sisters, ulama, shuyukh, my friends, two great, not, not just friends, but senior ulama, Shaykh Rafiq Sufi, may Allah preserve him, who gave a very wonderful talk. And also Shaykh Mufti Saiful Islam, may Allah preserve him, an old and dear friend of mine, who also, alhamdulillah, <coughs> honored us with his presence. I am, alhamdulillah, privileged and honored to be here with you today and being invited for this annual gathering of Jami'a Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. And the theme, as you all know, the poster, you must have seen, if not, you can see it right now, our relationship with the Qur'an. And even if you haven't seen it, you've heard the speaker speaking about something to do with the Qur'an. What I want to do briefly is to approach this topic in light of a specific verse of the Qur'an. And I want to approach this topic from a particular angle. I want to approach the topic of Qur'an from a specific angle perspective this Quran the book of Allah the words and the speech of Allah which is the Kalamullah the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a unique book it's unlike any other book it's unique it's unparalleled it's unchangeable until the day of judgment and beyond لا يغير ولا يبدل the Quran cannot be changed or altered or tampered with it's a unique book of Allah we have to remember this first and foremost brothers and sisters it's the speech and kalam of Allah these are the words of Allah the whole Quran the whole book the words of Allah not the words of any human being it's the words of Allah, Kalamullah. And Quran is actually just one name of many names. Quran is just one name. There are numerous names for this book. Al-Quran is one name. Al-Burhan is another name. Al-Tibyan is another name. Al-Nur is another name. Al-Kitab is another name. Al-Iflam Mim Dhalik Al-Kitab. Allah says, the book Al-Kitab, La Rayba Fi. Many numerous names. The ulama have actually compiled books in which they have mentioned and listed the various names of the Quran used by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam themselves. Some of them have actually mentioned 99 names for the Quran, for the Book of Allah. Quran is just one name of many names. It's actually from the word Qira'a. The masdar is Qira'a, which means recitation. It's regularly recited. It's recited, which means to recite. This is a unique book, unparalleled, a distinctive book, the speech and kalam of Allah. We should consider it to be a ni'mah, a gift, a bounty from our Lord and our Creator. We should not take it for granted. Unfortunately, what's happened? That, you know, many of us, we actually take the Quran for granted because we 
were born Muslims. We found the Quran in front of us. No effort, no hardship, no difficulty in obtaining the Book of Allah. We are born, we see the Quran in our homes, in the masjid. It's printed, it's published, thousands of copies. It's there before us. We take it for granted. And because we don't really truly appreciate and value the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't give it the due right. The verse of the Quran, and this is what I want to discuss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ الشِّفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ We have indeed revealed the Quran as a cure. We have indeed revealed the Quran as a cure, shifa. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ shifa. We hear this many times. Quran is a cure. Now what, what I want to do is look at the Qur'an being shifa and cure from three different angles, in three different ways. The Qur'an is a shifa and a cure for us spiritually, number one. Number two, the Qur'an is a cure for the diseases and ailments and the problems and of the society, of our communities. Afatul mujtama'. And number three, the Qur'an is also a cure from physical maladies, physical diseases, and physical sicknesses. But from the three, the Qur'an being a cure spiritually for societal problems, and number three, for physical problems and illnesses, the first two is really where the Qur'an is a cure. The first two are the primary areas where the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a shifa, it's a cure. The first two are the main two areas. Imam al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah used to actually say the Qur'an is only a spiritual cure. The Qur'an is not a cure for physical illnesses and sicknesses, even though this opinion is his own opinion and a personal opinion. The mainstream majority of the scholars of this ummah, their opinion and understanding is that the Qur'an is a cure even for physical ailments and sicknesses. But nevertheless, Qur'an is primarily, fundamentally, and chiefly it is a spiritual cure. It's a cure for us in a spiritual sense. And that if we do not take the Qur'an as a cure for our spiritual problems, for the sudur, and this is what Allah is saying, مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ Verily and indeed, we have revealed Al-Qur'an, the book. مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ that we, من القرآن, we have revealed the min here. Those of you who know Arabic, min, like Imam Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziya says this, min is not for tabi'in. Not, we have revealed parts or portions of the Quran. This is min, min al-bayaniya, which means we have revealed the book, the whole of Quran, from the beginning till the end, as a cure, as a shifa, as a cure, as a remedy. Rahma and a source of mercy for the believers. In another verse, Allah says, Had we revealed this book in a non-Arabic language, the non-Muslims in the time of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they actually requested and demanded that, why didn't the Quran be revealed in some other language? Why in Arabic? Allah responded and he said, had we revealed this book in a non-Arabic language, laqalu, they would have said, Lawla fussilat ayatu. Why are the verses not explained clearly? Lawla fussilat ayatu. Arabi. They would have said, a prophet who is an Arab, and the book is in a non-Arabic language. And then Allah says, Qul, O Messenger, say to them, Qul huwa lilladheena amanu hudan wa shifa. Say to the believers, this book is a guidance and is a cure, it's a shifa. So we all know Quran, from these two verses we've learned that the Quran is a cure. But as I said, primarily, fundamentally, Quran is a spiritual cure. We unfortunately move on to the second or the, on to the third step. For us, Quran is sometimes when someone gets ill or sick, make an amulet out of it. Read some verses of the Quran and blow on the water and drink it. That's the only time we, we use the book of Allah. That's something on the side. It's dhinna. Quran is not primarily a cure for physical diseases. It's there as I will talk about it. But ultimately and primarily, Quran is a shifa. When, the, when Allah says Quran is cure, it's a spiritual cure. And this is why Allah says, Ya ayyuhannas, O mankind, 
Remember, the mawidah, which is the Quran, the nasiha, the advice, the guidance, has come to you from your Lord. And then what does Allah say? This mawidah, this Quran, this book of Allah, speech, kalam of Allah, is shifa'un, a cure for what? Lima fi sudur. For, the, for that which is inside of the heart, spiritual cure. The Quran is a spiritual cure, cure from a spiritual disease, from spiritual ailments, ailments and problems and diseases and sicknesses and maladies. That's what the Quran is really for. And brothers, we really need to take the Quran as a spiritual cure. But how does the Quran be a spiritual cure? How do we take it as a spiritual cure? That's the question. How, do, how will the book of Allah, how will the speech and kalam of Allah, the words of Allah, be a cure for us spiritually? How? The first thing, as we all know, that we need to read the book of Allah. And most the scholars have said that we have to read. And of course, we all know. We, and, and this is something we all know. That we need to read the book of Allah. We all know that we have to read the book of Allah. That's something that... Tilawa, which is ibadah. We all know we have, to, we have to recite. That's something every Muslim knows. So I don't want to really emphasize the, the importance of tilawa. Because we all know, and there are numerous verses of the Quran. Tilawa is an ibadah. It's a form of worshipping Allah. Much, much reward on recitation. Right? And there's hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Abu Umam Al-Bahiri radiallahu anhu relates the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Iqra'u Al-Quran, recite the Quran, فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ It will come on the day of judgment as to intercede. It will intercede on the day of judgment for the one who recited it. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ Best amongst you is the one who teaches, the teachers, and the students who seek and learn the book. And numerous hadith. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad is a hadith where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-siyamu wal quran yashfi'ani li ashabi. Both fasting and the Qur'an on the day of judgment will come and intercede for the one who observed the fast and the one who recited the book of Allah. يَقُولُ الْقُرْءِ يَقُولُ الصِّيَامِ يَا رَبِّي مَنَعْتُهُ الطَّعَامَ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ فِي النَّهَارِ The fast, Allah will give it the ability to speak, to converse, and it will speak, and it will say that, Oh my Lord, in the world I prevented this person to, I prevented food. He was unable to eat, and I prevented him fulfilling his desires during the day. فَشَفِّعْنِي فِيهِ Accept my intercession for him and enter him into paradise. والقرآن يقول and Quran will also speak. Allah will give the Quran the ability, the capability to speak and converse. The Quran will say, يا ربي منعته الشراب منعته النوم في الليل. I prevented him from sleeping at night. He never slept. He 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 sacrificed his sleep to read me. فشفعني فيه. Accept my my intercession for him. For you shafani both Allah will accept the intercession of fast as well as the Quran. So anyway, we all know about the reading of the Quran, but there's a big but here. Brothers and sisters, this is the important part. If we really want the book of Allah, the Quran, Kalam Allah to be a spiritual cure for us, to help us spiritually, for it to be shifa ulima fi sudur, then there are etiquettes, there are laws, there are ahkam, there are adab. There is a method of reading the book of Allah. There is a way of reading the book of Allah. There is a method and a manner in which the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be recited. If you want to be the best, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ And if, you, if we want the Qur'an to intercede for us, to be a spiritual cure for us in this world, and there is a way. It's not, like some of the scholars also mentioned, it's not just that we read it anyhow. There are books, literally books written in regards to the method, the manner in which a person, a Muslim, a believer is supposed to read the book of Allah. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah wa anhu, one of the great imams of this ummah, a great muhaddith who wrote a commentary on the Sahih of Imam Muslim. 
in numerous volumes. Also a great faqih in the Shafi'i Madhab, Imam Muhyiuddin al nawawi He actually wrote a whole book in Arabic. It's a small book. Well, not too small, but it's a concise enough book. It's also translated into English. At-Tibyan fi adabi hamalat al-Qur'an. The etiquettes in regards to the recitation of the Book of Allah. And some of the things that he mentioned, that the early ulama and the salaf, what they used to do in light of the various verses of the Qur'an and the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is no ordinary book. You're not reading Harry Potter. It's not no ordinary book. There are etiquettes. If we read it just like any other ordinary book, then indeed it will not help us. But it's not any ordinary book. It's not just any book you pick up and you just lie down on your bed and chill and just spread your legs and relax and I say, oh yeah, I'm just reading a storybook. These are the words of Allah. Imagine. It's not the word, these are not the words of a human being. Direct kalamullah. These are exactly the words. These are exactly the words, not even by meaning. Al-Qur'an lafzan, nazman wa ma'na. In the books of Usul, those who study, you know, some of the books that are studied to become an alim, when they define Qur'an, they say Al-Qur'an is, Qur'an is ma'yantadimu lafzan wa ma'na. It's something that's lafzan by word as well as by meaning. It's not an expression of the meaning of Allah by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his own words. It's not like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not what Allah intended and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is using his own expression. No. Even the words, every letter is the letter and the kalam of Allah. It's no ordinary book. So there are, if it's, if it's an extraordinary book, then there are etiquettes that are extraordinary like for example what in order for the quran to intercede for us in order for us to have that strong connection and relationship and bond and link with the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the early scholars they used to they used to select and choose the right and appropriate place and the right and appropriate time to read the book of Allah. Point number one. Makan wa zaman. The right place and the right time. Right place? Of course you can read it anywhere. You can sit here and read as well the book of Allah. But in order to fulfill the etiquette, some said it's good to read in the masjid. The house of Allah is the most beautiful place where you can read the book of Allah. Turning and facing in the direction of the qibla. It's an etiquette. Some of them used to actually prepare themselves before the zaman and makan. They used to give importance to nawafa and tahara. They used to cleanse themselves, become pure and clean. They used to use the siwak and brush their teeth, freshen their mouth. You go to an important meeting. We all go to meetings. When we go to meetings, what do we do? We take a, can we use some mouth freshener? Ensure we eat extra chingam people use extra chingam for other reasons as well for good things as well in a good relationship inshallah but people want that they, 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 they don't have a bad odor in their mouth because you know you want, don't want to offend anybody this is a conversation with Allah the early scholars used to use the siwa they used to brush their teeth make wudu ablution or take a ghusl Beautify the clothing, play, apply some perfume, itar, good scent on oneself. We are moving, we are, we are reading the book of Allah. It's not a newspaper and it's not any human being or any scholar's book. Imagine, this is, this is the approach that we need to take. And then select the right place. If you can in the masjid, great. If not at home, anywhere. But don't read the book of Allah where you are disturbed. The TV is on and you're in the, in the corner of the room trying to read the Quran. You need a place of solitude, of seclusion, where you are able to concentrate. And then the time. Select Quran can be recited anytime during the 24 hours. But there are certain times, like for example in the middle of the night. The hadith I've just quoted, 
the Quran will say, Ya Rabbi, manatuhu al-layl fi manatuhu al-nawm fi al-layl. I prevented him from sleeping at night in the middle of the night in Salatu al-Tahajjud in Qiyam al-Layl. And like Sheikh Rafiq Sufi was saying, in Salatu al-Taraweeh, listening and reciting the Book of Allah in the middle of the night. And one of the really important and great times to read the Book of Allah. Seriously, you need to give really importance to this. And those of you who do have this habit, you know yourself the benefits of this. Reading the Book of Allah early in the morning after Salatul Fajr. This is a must for every Muslim. Maybe you can't wake up at night and read the Book of Allah. Then at least in your life, at least take out 20 minutes, half an hour, if not 15 minutes. I mean, a Muslim who spends a life of 70, 60, 50, 80 years and cannot read the Book of Allah every day. We do everything. We're saying we're very busy, busy, busy. Life's very busy. 10 minutes from our 24-hour schedule to read the Book of Allah. It's not difficult. 10 minutes in the morning. And seriously, if you read in the morning, you'll see the benefits. Your whole day will go smooth. It's one of the really important means of getting and achieving and obtaining that peace and tranquility and smoothness in your day. Start off your day with Salatul Fajr, a bit of Adhkar and Istighfar, and the recitation of the Book of Allah, you'll see that day is much better than a day in which you don't read the Book of Allah. Early in the morning, with, you know, recite the Book of Allah. This is in the Quran, Allah says, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ, ال... وقرآن الْفَجْرِ أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ Establish your prayer لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ Duluk means zawal when, when you know, the sun starts, when it comes to the center, when it starts moving down. So from that time, start offering your prayers, which means ظهر إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ Which includes ظهر عَسَرَ مَغْرَبْ عِشَىٰ All the way until when the night ends. So Allah mentions four prayers in Aqimi Salata Liduluk Shamsi Ila Rasaqi Lay. And then he says, Wa Quran al Fajr. Allah is really talking about Salatul Fajr, but to describe the Fajr prayer, he said, Wa Quran al Fajr. Quran of Fajr. In the Quran al Fajr kana mashhuda. The Quran of Fajr is well attended. Well attended by who? The angels. Tahduruhu al Malaika. It's a unique time. You know when it's not too light and not too dark. It's, you're by yourself in a peaceful, tranquil state. You're fresh in the mind. You've just woken up from a good night's sleep. Without seeing any dreams that you are not supposed to see. May Allah save us all from the bad dreams. But inshallah we've woken up from a nice sleep. And sleep early. So you spend good 6-7 hours. You're fresh. And first thing in your day, the first thing that comes on your mind and your brain is the on your tongue, the, the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah. In the Quran al Fajri kana mashhuda a woman al layli fatahajjad bi and also at night recite and perform so perform tahajjud prayer bihi with the Quran. And some more etiquettes. We looked at the time, we look at the place. The next two things the ulama Imam al Nawawi mentions in his book that these two are Rukanani Aliman, the two integrals, the most important elements in regards to the etiquettes of reciting the Book of Allah. Rukan, rukan means an integral. Rukanani Aliman, what are they? Number one, Tartil, number two, Tadabbur. Some of the scholars, Shaykh Rafiq Sufi, mentioned something about Tartil as well. Tartil. What is Tartil? Reciting the Book of Allah in a calm, composed, measured manner. Tartil. Allah says, وَرَدْتِلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا Recite the book slowly and Tartila. Allah emphasized it. This is what we call Ta'keed, emphasis. وَرَدْتِلْ Tartila. وَرَدْتِلِ الْقُرْآنَ Tartila. The first Part of this tartil is to recite every letter as it ought to be recited. Ma'a ri'ayati ahkami tajweed with proper implementation of the rules of tajweed. 
Unfortunately, we live in a time where people are born Muslims, they consider themselves Muslims, they live a life of 70 years, they have a degree in every field, they know everything about the politics, they know how to make an atom bomb, they know all the details about everything. But the basic that they think that they don't know is how to read the book of Allah. I mean, that is so sad. That's the most sad thing you can ever find in this world. A Muslim who's 30 years of age, he cannot recite in Arabic. Remember the rewards are in Arabic. There is benefit in reading the translation as well. But when the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, says that there's a re- 10 rewards on every letter, Alif, La aqulu alif un harfun, wa lam un harfun, wa mim un harfun. La aqulu alif la mim harf, but alif un harfun, wa lam un harfun, wa mim un harfun. Every alif, la mim. 30 rewards. It's on the letter, because these are the letters and words of Allah. A Muslim who spends a life of 50, 60, 70 years, if he cannot learn how to recite the book of Allah, with proper implementation of the rules of tajweed, then that Muslim is in an extremely sad state. It's very, very sad. It's, that Muslim is very unfortunate. It's your basic book before anything in this world, before ever picking up a newspaper, before ever going onto the internet, before even knowing how to use a computer or a PC or an iPhone. The first thing in your life is what? Learning how to read the book of Allah. That doesn't mean that somebody who hasn't learned it, that time's passed. No, we, until death we have time. You could be 60, start today. Take our time. 20 minutes, half an hour. We are not living for this world. We are living for the next life. This life is short. So, with tajweed. Tartil means with tajweed. And also part of reciting the book of Allah with tajweed is to recite it calmly in a composed manner, in a composed measured tone. This is tartil, not don't be hasty. Remember with Allah it's not about quantity, it's about quality. It's not about quality. Ramadan is coming. Ramadan has a strong connection with the book of Allah. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Ramadan is Quran. It's the month of Quran. Read it slowly. This reading it gradually, slowly is what is required. Remember in the month of Ramadan, it's not about quantity. You can make ten completions of the Quran. But someone who probably makes one completion and does it with proper etiquettes is far better. It's not about reading fast and finishing 20, 30, 40, 60, 100. Oh, I've done 100. Like, and you, just, you don't even read, know, realize what you've read yourself. Some of the letters are chewed up. And in Tarawih sometimes, like Shaykh Rafiq was saying, we want ourselves to recite fast and others around us. This is, this is totally wrong against the spirit of Islam. It's, it's more wrong, and this is a ruling, it's more wrong to come and read uh, and stand behind the Imam and want to, the Imam to haste and read fast than not read altogether. This is a ruling. Seriously, because reading with tajweed slowly, gradually is fard. What is it? Fard. And completing the Quran is very, very, extremely important, but it's sunnah. You're supposed to do both. I'm not telling you to choose one. But if there was a choice between the two, you read less and complete uh, with proper etiquettes. With proper etiquettes, complete the book of Allah slowly, gradually. Don't ask and demand from the Imam to recite it in a fast manner, in a hasty way. And don't recite yourself in a hasty way. Remember, we, you know, we should approach the Quran. We need, it should not be like a burden. Taraweeh is not a burden. Worship Allah with love, not out of extreme fear. There is fear. But have that love, desire. You want to listen to the book of Allah. Not, okay, it's a burden, quick. 20, oh, what time is it? How many? After salam, brother, how many left? 14? Two more left? 
How much left? After every two rak'at, we're asking how many rak'at left. That's not the way a Muslim worships Allah. When you're with your beloved, you're spending time in the company of your beloved wife or husband, inshallah. You're newly married. You keep on asking, okay, what time is it? What time is it? I need to go. I need to go. You've just spent like 10 minutes. What time is it? How, many, how much more time do we have left here? You want to enjoy every minute. That's our relationship with Allah. We need to enjoy every minute of Salatul Taraweeh. So that's Tartil. And the next point I mentioned, do you remember? Tadabbur. This is unique. This is important. Tadabbur, and I think Mufti Sayyid Islam probably mentioned some of this. I wasn't here, but from Shaykh Rafiq Sufi's talk, it indicated that he mentioned something about Tadabbur. Reflection and thought. Remember, Qur'an will be a spiritual cure for us. If we recite the book of Allah with understanding, with concentration, with reflection, with tafakkur and tadabbur. Remember, there are two extremes here, right? I'll tell you this. this, is, this is, there are two extremes here. There's one extreme within some Muslims who actually, they, they, they don't have the tools. They don't know the Arabic language, and even if you know the Arabic language, the Quran is it's it's unique. It's not for if it's not every Tom Dick and Harry's cup of tea. It's got ayatul ahkam, the rules, regulations, istimbatul ahkam. There are rules and there are verses related to law, and really it requires a lot of explanation and deep understanding. And you need all the necessary tools of everything from Arabic language and grammar and saraf and nahu, and you need to know your hadith and the terminologies of hadith and the asbab al nuzul and Usul al fiqh and Usul al hadith and uh, fasaha and balagha and numerous sciences. One extreme is some people, of some people is that without any tools they start you know, translating the Quran and deriving and extracting laws and rules, deviating themselves and deviating others. Man qala fil Qurani bi the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says with his own opinion in the Quran something for asaba faqad akhta. Even if he was right, he's incorrect. Let him make his abode in the fire of hell. That's one extreme. However, we have another extreme. And this needs to be also said and understood. Some of us, we've taken an oath that until death do us part, we will never even understand one letter of the book of Allah or one word. Who said that? This is not part of Islam. This is another extreme. We don't want to understand at all. We think it's completely, totally, utterly forbidden, haram, sinful to even know what Jannah means. Nobody said that. There are verses of the Quran that are detailed. Ayatul Ahkam. We leave that to the scholars. There are simple verses of Jannah, of Jahannam, of the previous nations. There are simple verses and this is why Allah says وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِّكْرِ We have made the Qur'an easy for dhikr, for, for the basic message, nasiha, guidance. We can understand, keep a good, reliable translation with you in your morning when you're reciting the book of Allah. Go with the translation, anything difficult, complicated, stop. Leave it and then go and ask your local imam or the shuyukh and the ulama and go to them and seek explanation and the proper commentary but basic meanings to the point that so many Muslims do not even know what the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha is we recite Surah Al-Fatiha daily how many times? I don't know how many times I haven't done the maths 17 times just for Farai and much more but we don't know SubhanAllah not even the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha if we know the meanings then our Salah be totally gets transformed totally transformed when you're reciting and this is what we call khushur we have khushur and we have khudur al khudur of al zahir wal khushur of al batin khudur these are two words they don't mean the same khushur and khudur there's a difference khudur is externally your your salah is in accordance with the sunnah like the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli but khushur is inside concentration and there are three levels of khushu' the ulama mentioned. The first basic level of khushu' in salah, when you want your prayer to benefit you, if we want our prayers, they don't benefit us nowadays. Because our salah is just like an empty, you know, gas-free. There's, there's no power in the prayer. 
If we want salah to help us and benefit us in this life and prevent us in the salah and tanha ali fahshai wal munkar, there are three levels of khushu'ah. First basic level is actually knowing and realizing what you're doing at that particular time. Allahu Akbar. I know I am saying Allahu Akbar. Probably most of us remember that. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. We should know the meaning. Oh, there's a dua al tawjeeh. Inni wajjahtu wajjhe lilladhi fadra samawati wal arda hanifa wa ma'ana min al mushriki. We need to know what the meaning of that is. And then, a'udhu billahi min shaytani rajeem. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. If you know the meanings, unique verses. Rabbil alameen. You're thinking about Rabbil alameen. If you know the verses, you'll never complain about the imam reading so slow. You're enjoying it. So do the tafakkur and tadabbur. You won't know everything if you're not a scholar. That doesn't mean every single verse you know. But you'll get the basic gist of what's happening. But Ali Sunul Fatiha. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina as-sarat al-mustaqeen. This verse in itself. Oh Allah, take us onto the straight path. Not even guidance. Some of the ulama said the translation is better to do take us. Guide us is to show direction. If I ask someone, what's, where's, you know, Meadowhall in Sheffield. I've not been there, by the way, yet. This is the first time I've actually, I've lived or born here. First time ever I've come to Sheffield through the barakah of Hafiz Shafiq Sa. Where's Meadowhall? And I said, you take a right from there, take a left from there, go over the, fa- um, uh, I was going to say fountain. <laughs> go over the flyover. Uh, take a right, take a left, and then you know, take a, a U turn from there and here, and you'll get that. That's directing someone. That's hidayah. That's hi- you know, if Allah said in the Quran, if we were reciting, ihdina ila sirati, that's Allah saying, okay, good, that's the straight path. Take a right, take a to left, go this way, that way. But Allah did not use ihdina ila sirati. Ihdina sirata. Oh Allah, don't show us and guide us and tell us from far where the right path is. Just pick us up and put us on the right path. This is إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. من ذا نيو ديز فاسز. They should shake a person. Every time you read it, it increases your iman. تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا. So we have this duty to understand. And this is in the Quran. Kitab anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. O Messenger, we reveal the book to you, as, which is full of blessings. Why? Liyadabbaru ayati. So that they reflect and ponder. We need to use our brains, brothers and sisters. We live in a time where many of us, we don't use the great intellect and aql that Allah has given us. If we don't use this, it becomes rusty. You need to keep it fresh by using it. Allah says in the Quran about reflection, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Don't they reflect and ponder over the Quran? أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or are their hearts sealed and locked and closed and blocked? أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا So this is the reflection. When, when an ayah of rahmah comes, when the mercy of Allah is, you know you're reading the Quran first thing in the morning, subhanAllah. And you see the Quran, the eye of Rahmah, talking about the mercy of Allah. Allah says, you know, in the Quran, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, for example, or any other verse that talks about the Rahman, mercy of Allah. You stop there. You ponder. This is tafakkur tadabbur. You reflect, you think for a while. Oh Allah, your Rahmah, your mercy is great. Look at all the ni'am, all the bounties, all the gifts you've given me. Allahumma rahmani, Allah, increase. You've already had mercy on me. Increase me in the mercy. Give me more Rahmah. When the ayah verse of punishment, you pass by, you come across an ayah of punishment, adab, then if that punishment is about the kuffar, the non-believers, then you think, Alhamdulillah, Allah made me a believer. Thank Allah, oh Allah, I thank you. Show gratitude for being a believer. And renew your iman. Say, Amantu billahi wahda. I believe in Allah. If the ayah is about sinful believers, then if you are free from that sin, then again, praise Allah, thank Allah, oh Allah, I am thankful that I am not involved in this zina. Wala taqrabu zina. Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, I am not involved in this. And keep me like this on the day until I die. And if you are involved in a sin, that sin, the one which is being mentioned, then what do you do? 
What do we do? Istighfar, straight away seek tawbah and repent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are verses, this is all etiquette. There are verses in the Quran wherein Allah addresses us. If you pick up the book of Allah, many places you'll see, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. Are you believers? Alhamdulillah. Am I believe? Alhamdulillah. We are all believers. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? The Christians? The Jews? He's talking to us. When you read, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, is Allah saying, O you who believe. Yes, yes, Allah. I'm listening now. Stop. You know, there's one of my, uh, one of my friends who's in America, one of, uh, a sheikh. He actually gave a whole course and on a day. All the Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanus in the Quran. One whole day course on all the verses that have Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman. Stop. Some of the early ulama used to say, Labbayka Rabbi wa Sa'adayk. I am here, O oh my Lord. Tell me. What do you want to tell me, O oh my Lord? I am here. I am present. I am listening to you. I am from Minal Ladina Aman. Then Allah says, Fusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save yourselves and your family from the fire of hell. Think. Am I fulfilling the duty of saving myself from the fire of hell? Am I fulfilling the duty and the responsibility of saving my family and myself from the fire of hell? If I am, Alhamdulillah. If I'm, if I'm not, make a resolution. Yes, oh Allah, I'm listening to you. I will do this from today. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Sincerely repent. Oh Allah, I seek your repentance. Straight away, don't wait. This is the way to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when there are verses to do with the previous nations, take heed. They were, they were not just stories for stories. Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, peace be upon him. The story of Musa and the story of all the other nation prophets alayhim as salatu afdal taslim and the nations, they were not just stories that you know we listen to them as stories and entertainment. Nazalat fihim ibratan lana, they were revealed regarding them as a lesson for us. As a lesson for us. So take lessons from these stories. And also there are other etiquettes like crying, shedding some tears. Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah, the great scholar of this ummah, Abu Hamid, Hujjatul Islam, they used to call him. He would say, Al-Buka'u mustahabun ma'a qira'at al-Qur'an. It's recommended to shed some tears. And actually it's in the hadith. There's a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Iqra'u al-Qur'ana wabkaw. Read the Qur'an and cry. فَإِن لَمْ تَبْكُوا فَتَبَاكُوا If you can't cry, then just try. Just try. Pretend you are crying when a Muslim is reading the words of Allah. He's reading with, with a, it comes out from the heart, and this is the reason why when we listen to someone, an Imam who is reading from the heart, it affects our hearts. The Quran should come out from the heart, not just from the mouth. So with crying as well, repetition of verses, takrarul ayah, also one of the great recommended things. Repeat. An important verse comes, repeat. That's why we hear some of the Imams, they repeat. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he was reciting, he came to the verse, إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكْ وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Whole night he repeated that verse. No time for translation, but a whole night he, he repeated that verse. Talk, talk with Allah. This is what we call tajawub, responding. Allah says in Surah Wattin wa Zaytun, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Isn't Allah the Lord of the Lords? Uh, Allah is, isn't Allah the ruler of the rulers, the greatest ruler, أَحْكَمَ الْحَاكِمِينَ The ulama used to say, بَلَى Indeed, O oh Allah. There is no shak in it. There is no doubt in it. وَأَنَا عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ I am a witness to the fact, أَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ You are أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ so these are the etiquettes in which we should read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also recitation, brothers and sisters. Recitation, sorry, also listening is a great act of ibadah. Not just reading, reading is more important, but even listening. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu once was with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, recite some Quran to me. Asmi'na, ya Abdullah. He said, وَأَقْرَأُوا عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَيْكَ أُنزِلْ 
how can I read on you when the Quran was revealed to you, me reading to you? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَسْمَعَهُ مِنْ غَيْرِ Sometimes I like to listen from someone else. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, فَقَرَأْتُ سُورَةَ nisa I recited Surah Al-Nisa. And I recited, and I recited, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was engrossed deep in the, recit- in the listening of the Book of Allah. حتى إذا أتيت إلى آية فكيف إذا جئنا من كل أمة بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا When I came to this verse which means that the Messenger Sallallahu from every nation will bring a witness and oh you O Messenger you'll be a witness to all these witnesses the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me حسبك حسبك enough enough that's enough فَنَظَرَتُ إِلَيْهِ عبد الله بن مسعود said I looked at the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم فَإِذَا أَيْنَاهُ تَذْرِفَانِ His eyes were shedding tears. This is listening. We need to take time out to listen brothers and sisters. More time to listen to the Quran than listening to the news or listening to the radio or even listening to, I may say this, maybe you agree or not, to religious talks and maybe not religious talks because it's important you need to that's the explanation of the Quran but definitely more than nasheeds it's perfectly fine to listening to nasheed we have nasheeds in our programs perfectly fine na'at ladam but the amount of time we spend on nasheed our time listening to the Quran should be double because most of this is entertainment nowadays we don't even understand sometimes the meanings People just like the beats and the nasheed and the iPod and the iPad and the iPhone and this and all that. I'm downloading everything and it's relaxing and you know in the car. Listen to the Quran first and foremost. Give Quran more attention. Listen to that more than you listen to the nasheed. Because it's, it's people, oh I like this now. Why do you like it for? Is there some spiritual meaning? Maybe for some people, yes. But for some, most of us, it's entertainment. You don't even understand. Like one brother came to me with a CD. He said, Shaykh, you know, I want to know if this is halal. Are the drums okay in this? You know, can you check it out for me? I said, okay, I'll listen to it. I put the CD on. And you know what it was? It was Arabic. But you know what it was? A Lebanese singer singing about music, about sex, about stuff like that. And he said, I've been listening for the past year. It sounds beautiful. It has Allah. You know, the guy's talking about Allah, ishka, ishka, Allah, and stuff. He's thinking about love of Allah. He's talking about his beloved and about sex and things like that. Now, anything that sounds, the guy doesn't know Arabic. Anything sounds Arabic for him is like a nasheed to do with Islam that had nothing to do with Islam. He was a Lebanese singer. You know, by the way, Lebanese, I've been to Lebanon a few times. They love their, nash- their dancing and their music. A lot of the Arabic tunes come out from the Lebanese. A lot of the Indian and Pakistani and Urdu tunes come out from the Pakistani songs. But okay, you can listen. But listening, giving more attention to the book of Allah. Listen to it, read it, recite it, ponder over it, reflect upon it, understand it, go to the scholars and learn the meanings, the tafsir, the commentary of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we do that, then the Quran will be a cure for a spirit. I've only done one point, and there's no time for the second and the third point, but I'm just going to stop here. Quran will become, I started the, the talk with, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءِ We have revealed the Quran as a shifa cure. Shifa cure spiritually, number one. Number two, cure for all the societal, global, family problems. And number three, physical illnesses. I've just covered the first point, which is Quran being a spiritual cure for us. Shifa lima fi sudur. If Allah gives time, some other time, we may talk about the second point: how the Quran is a cure for our problems at home, family problems, problems within the within the community, in the society, global problems, and lastly, how Quran is also a cure from headaches, from physical, you know, from physical diseases and illnesses. I end with this inshallah. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me first and foremost and all of you the tawfiq to practice on some of the things that have been said. And we also pray like Shaykh Rafiq Sufi prayed and made dua for these children. May Allah grant them tawfiq. May Allah make them great Muslims from amongst his awliya and his friends. Those who learn the Quran, 
and those who will read the Quran and not just read it but also understand it, try to reflect upon it, recite it with all the etiquette and implement the message of the Quran in their lives, inshaAllah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله